Hi, I'm Fesk, my 3D art is based in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Our work has a really surreal yet sci-fi vibe with a consistent color palette of red, blue, and purple. Uh, in this tutorial, I will show you how you can use MoCraft effectors to create a little bit more depth in this HUD animation. It's really, really simple, yet quite effective. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, okay, so this is a really simple effect that consists in two main parts. One uh, is animating the geometry to create depth uh, using cameras and the texturing uh, of this geometry itself. So like the, the geometry side of it is plain and simple. As I press play here, you can see that I'm kind of animating this plane. It's, it's a simple plane, but I'm animating each single polygon to kind of uh, move around perpendicular to the camera. And as I have the, the camera uh, focal point focus on the text, the, the geometry closer to the camera and farther away from the focal point, it gets a little bit more blurred out, right? Uh, so let's start out with the uh, plane, for instance. Okay, so the plane is extremely straightforward. We are only using uh, a MoGraph poly effects. And the way the poly effects works is going to make some of our D understand each single polygon individually. And poly effects accepts effectors from the MoGraph. So you can pretty much use any type of effector that you want uh, in this geometry now. Uh, so we're going to use a shader effector because they are easy to animate, procedurally animate and loop. Um, and for this, let me disable the scale a little bit and enable the Z position. <laughs> and as you can see, since we don't have any shaders applied, uh, the, the plane straight, uh, moves straight up. So what we're going to do, we go to the shading tab of the shader and apply a noise. So right off the bat, uh, the noise shader is now driving uh, how the polygons move. So here in the shader, shader, we can fine tune this a little bit, like establishing a low clip. So they kind of sit more at the bottom uh, and increasing the contrast a little bit. So we can now maybe, and this is depends on your scene, but we can crank up the, the Z axis a little bit. The thing is with the shader effector, as I mentioned, it's pretty simple to animate. So down here in animation, we can go to animation speed in place one. And loop period is uh, overall is basically the amount of seconds that you want to animate. Since we have 90 frames at 30 frames per second, we place this at three because we have three seconds. So if we hit play here, we already have almost the exact animation that I had before. I think that the only thing that I added is not only uh, the, the polygons go up, but they also uh, decrease in size a little bit so we can do minus 0 0.3 for example so this uh, the farther they go up the the smaller they become and this is the basic principle for this right here so as I have these moving away from the focal point they get more blurred out so and I can always control how how blurred they get with uh, the CCO radius and once again this is a redshift uh, camera, but you can do the same with an octane camera or even the physical camera from uh, standard Cinema 4D. Uh, the next uh, part that is quite important is the texturing, right? So maybe going to disable the shader so we can see the plane on the, on the, the bottom. Uh, really quick, uh, the plane also has a redshift tag. Since this is a hologram, we don't exactly want the geometry affecting the shadows of the scene. So maybe I can demonstrate this. So right now, um, the the redshift tag is avoiding the geometry to cast shadows and and self shadows and image occlusion. If I enable this again, you can see that right off the bat, this geometry is uh, blocking the light to to hit like the, the surface of the rock. So it's really important when it comes to holograms and all this type of stuff you disable the cast shadow options. This is in Redshift, but I'm pretty sure Octane and Physical Render has the same uh, feature too. Um, so, okay, for the texture, let's open the shader graph. 
Um, so I'm basically stacking a bunch of noises to mask out the, the main texture here. So let's try to uh, plug the main texture, texture straight into the incandescent material. So yeah, this is the basic, the base texture is a bunch of binary code uh, tiled around. So what I did here is that I'm using maximum noise. It's a, it's a standard noise for Cinema 4D inside the Redshift. Uh, and if I plug this directly, you can see that I'm using a cell noise uh, animated uh, over the, the texture. Let me change it, get this to a more perspective look. So yeah, and I'm using this to mask out using a color composite node the main texture. So if I now connect this one, I'm masking out the areas uh, and and only have the binary code show uh, on the white areas of this noise. And I'm doing the same with this other noise. I'm basically stacking the noise. This one is more granular per se. So I'm stacking those. Uh, and at the end, I'm stacking with a gradient. So <laughs> this is a gradient just to avoid that the text clutters together in the center. So as you can see, the final result is something like this. Uh, we have the text avoiding the center. Let me try to get a better look at this. Uh, the text avoiding the center uh, and kind of glitching out. Since all these uh, noises are animated, if I scroll through my timeline, you can see that that's all animated. So this uh, is going into the alpha channel of the material. So we get the transparency and I'm using a gradient as, oh damn, <laughs> I, I disconnected the wrong one. Um, and I'm using the gradient as the color. Boom, there you go. Uh, it's a simple gradient from dark blue to more light blue. Uh, but yeah, so this texture uh, combined together with the, the position shader um, and the poly effect is causing this, this effect to have way more depth uh, in the scene. All right, so I really hope that you like this tutorial. Once again, it's quite simple, but the final result is quite effective. See you in the next one.